Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, my name's Kit, and this... Why am I hearing noises? I heard a noise. Am I being stalked? Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, my name's Kit, and this is not my world, but it's quite close to my world. Welcome to episode three of Farseer Fridays. In the second half of book two, um, the ongoing battle of wills between Fitzchivalry and the evil Prince Regal reaches its climax. Um, and it's a crescendo that has been building throughout the first couple of books, but the climax happens at the end of book two. And what a climax it is. It basically jogs the whole story sideways onto a completely different track. And so in book three, where I am now, everything has changed. Fitzchivalry Farseer is no longer the royal assassin. In fact, he's no longer the anything. Um, everyone assumes that he's dead. Um, so he's no longer working for the crown. He's working for himself. And he's on a mission of revenge, personal revenge. He's out to get Prince Regal. He needs to assassinate Regal in order to restore the true king to the throne. And the true king at this stage is Prince Verity. Um, Verity is is a good guy, but he's kind of absent from the story. He's off on a quest in search of the Elderlings. The Elderlings are the mythical creatures that will hopefully save the Kingdom of the Six Duchies from the marauding Red Ship Raiders. So... Verity is off on a quest searching for the Elderlings. Prince Regal, who is now King Regal, has taken himself off to Tradeford, which is his power base, um, and he's holed up there being the king, partying and having a lovely time. Prince Regal crowned himself king in his elder brother's absence and enthusiastically plundered the coastal duchies of all their riches, which he transferred, along with himself and his entire royal court, to his luxury inland estates, far from the dangers of the Red Ship Raids. And this spoiled, pampered, false king is now indulging his taste for parties, booze and drugs. And Fitzchivalry, who everyone presumes dead, is trekking through the countryside on his way to Tradeford, where he hopes to assassinate King Regal and thereby restore Verity to the throne. By the way, everyone thinks Verity is dead as well. It's all very confusing, but the thing that you need to bear in mind is that book three has a completely different feel and flavour from the previous two books. It's an outdoorsy kind of book. It's an outdoors adventure, and uh, the first half certainly follows Fitz on his way to Tradeford through the countryside and the woodlands, and he's not alone. In book two, we were introduced to Night Eyes, and I was trying to keep Night Eyes a secret from you, but it's stupid to do that. He's such an important character, I can't do this without mentioning Night Eyes. Night Eyes is a wolf. 
Night Eyes is a hugely important character in the whole series of books. He is probably my favourite literary character ever. Of course, because he's able to communicate telepathically with Fitz, there's some good conversations, some good dialogue. It's just fun. And in book three, the two of them go off together and have an adventure. The relationship between Fitz and Night Eyes is really the heart of this story, at least for me. The story of an intense and oftentimes painful bond between two characters whose love and camaraderie transcend death itself. It's a story that I frequently describe as exquisitely well written, and it is for what it is. It's not a hefty piece of literature written by one of the great writers of the 18th, 19th or 20th century. It's a fantasy series, and as a fantasy series, I think it's very, very good. I love it. I love the voice of the writer, because the voice of the writer in this first-person story is Fitz, and I love Fitz. He feels like me. I connect with him. So that's why I'm enjoying these books so much. Um, And I apologise if I have caused offence to anyone who's a proper bookish sort of bookie-bookie person, uh, because obviously these aren't classic literature. They're fantasy, but they're some of my favourite fantasy, as it turns out. Now that I've discovered the formula for not having a nervous breakdown every time I read them. And on that note, I think I'll call it a day. Thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you haven't already, you know what to do. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share, comment, do all the good stuff, and I will see you next time. See you later.